Coders Uncensored is a podcast where real-life coders share their stories, best practices, and talk about coding and beyond. Coders Uncensored, podcast, real-life coders, best practices, coding and beyond, coding and beyond. This is Coders Uncensored. Welcome, coders and people. I'm Angel Cora. I'm the senior coder of the group. I'm Trevor Steed, and I'm coder on the block. And this is Coders Uncensored. And before we start, actually, uh, I keep messing this up. Why do I do this, Travis? Because I keep forgetting to introduce the producer of the show. So for the next one, I promise you it's going to be perfect. It's going to be flawless. Uh, the producer of the show is Mandy as well. And she obviously is the brains behind the live and the brains behind everything. So welcome to her as well. She will be uh, in the back today. Um, so you might actually get a little uh, sneak peek here and there from her, but um, she will be uh, directing the show today. So thank you. <laughs> um, so, so for this week, our topic is developing and data. We are currently live streaming right now on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Send in your questions, comments, uh, anything, your feelings, whatever, and we'll read them on the show towards the end. Or honestly, however Mandy feels like throwing those questions out. <laughs> if you're listening to us on the podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are on every major podcast streaming like Apple, Google Play, Spotify, Deezer, and so forth. Um, and yeah, but again, before we jump in to talking about the topic for the week, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the week. And that was a clusterfuck of a sentence, but y'all know what I meant. So, <laughs> Travis, tell me about your week. How was it? Uh, uh, the week was great, man. Um, been working on a big project with uh, Get Cannabis, kind of getting ready to refactor or, well, actually, no, recreate a brand new uh, website so, yep. uh, from scratch. And opposed to refactoring, like we went between the two, we're going to actually create something from scratch. So excited about getting that project underway. Um, I was really excited about that. Uh, what, what about you? What's going on with your week? Um, if people follow me on my Instagram or on anywhere else, they they know that this week has been hard. It's been hard. We, uh, not even coding-wise, just personal-wise, uh, we decided to surprise my mother for Mother's Day this past Sunday. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And thank you for tuning in. <laughs> um, unfortunately, when we got here, um, you know, it was great. So we decided to spend just one extra night to be at my niece's birthday. And um, she was going to get a princess. The princess was not the princess we expected. <laughs> it was a fake ass princess. Um, just, cause we, just because we extended that day, uh, that's when everything started happening with the gas. And then now we're stuck in Florida. So uh, our, my week has been hectic because I have been, we have been living out of a suitcase this entire week while we try to code, while we still maintain this business. And uh, it's been absolutely crazy because we're stuck in Florida and we cannot get back home to Atlanta. So <laughs> here we are, drinking sweat, me wearing the only sweater I have left in my suitcase in this hot Florida weather. And that's been my week. And all I have to say is Lee, uh, I, I, I chatted with her earlier today. I don't know how she does it. I don't know how people voluntarily live in Florida and are like, yeah, I choose to be in this heat. So good job for you guys. <laughs> but you're here. You made it. You made it. You made it through. We made it. We made it. Uh, if there's anything that I learned is that whenever we work remotely or whenever we do take a trip, we have to plan like a like a what if. Like never in a million years that I think we were going to get hacked by Russian hackers. What? Russian hackers and hack the hack the gas, and then everyone in the like if you would have like had a like a whole spinning wheel of the world, you know, and land on something that will maybe happen in the next few days, it would have never been that. Right, stuck in Florida with no gas. Don't even <laughs> never. Um, but aside from that, let's uh, let's talk about uh, developing and data. Do you know anything about uh, databases and and coding, Charles? The only thing I know is what just recently did on a project. What the last two days we're working on 
um, building the database with the WordPress database through um, SQL Ace and setting up the database there. Mm -hmm. And then I did a little research about um, was it ProQuest and um, uh, SQL and an Oracle. I saw a lot of a lot of big companies like Netflix or Facebook, whatever, use Oracle. Um, that's all all I really know and saw that it wasn't that exciting. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of tables. Yeah. And, Getting information out of the database, and there's a language to get the information from the database to you know whoever needs it and stuff like that. But that's about it. That's all I know. <laughs> um, I do know a little bit, and I'm super excited for this week's future coder darlies to educate us on this topic because the only thing I know, I feel like I know enough to be like, yeah, I know this shit. But at the same time, if people ask me like, hey, can you like replace something in your database? just through SQL commands, I would be like, nah, <laughs> it's, hard. It's, it's, it's really hard. So I'm really excited uh, to bring her in. So, but before we do, let's uh, do a quick word from our sponsor. Stay informed on health and laws regarding cannabis from agriculture and business to entertainment and fun topics. Geek Cannabis is your online source for news and updates about cannabis, CBD, and hemp worldwide. GeekCannabis.com So with no further ado, let's introduce the badass in tech, <laughs> Darlies, Darveloper. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And there she is. I'm like, dang, you introduced me so correctly. I'm like, badass. Yes. 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 Period. <laughs> hey, guys. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. I'm excited. Welcome, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Um, it's super excited to, to for you to be here. I know it's. Um, I know we talked a little this week, and uh, I'm super ready to ask you all the hard questions. But also, let's make this fun. <laughs> oh my the hard questions! <laughs> oh my so gosh! Oh yes. So let's jump right into it. Uh, let's jump yeah. into the cool questions. Great. So um, let's start with the first question. Travis, do you want to take this one? Yeah. So let's yeah let's start uh, with colder questions. Um, we did some research. Oh no. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I saw your website. So we wanted to know how did you develop your website? Like, what program language did you use? What database did you use? Like, tell us about that. Okay. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I <laughs> created my portfolio site, but based on a project I did in coding bootcamp. So I completely recycled that code and just switched stuff around and just put in the data. I was like, all right, that works. Cool. We'll just put that up. I just needed to put something up for some clients. Um, but with like the programming language I used, I used uh, JavaScript and the React framework for my front end. And I used uh, Node.js Expre and Express and MySQL for my backend, which I mean, like, I mean, it's not like fancy or anything. <laughs> like, I literally like just threw it together and was like, "This is done," you know. So no fanciness there. Hey, <laughs> thanks. I mean, hey, it it was like I think a couple hours of work. So I mean, I'm I'm proud of it for a couple hours, you know. Hey, I'm with you 100% because uh, I think mine, similar to your your thing, I remember I had a project due um, and they had said, hey, do you know Vue, JS? <laughs> like, no, but I'll learn it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Always my answer to right. everything. Like, I don't know, but I can figure it out. And I built my portfolio on Vue. Like, there's no pages. It's not connected to anything. <laughs> it's just like a single page Vue crappy app and it's been like that for four years oh so, my god <laughs> so it's embarrassing but at the same time it gets it gets you know the performance right. is there, you know? Done. like you know whatever who cares i mean it's up there and you learn views like come on <laughs> <laughs> and, i mean you know more now than you know than you knew before that is true that is absolutely <laughs> true. so um I did have a chance to uh, to read the article. Uh, I think it was by Kenzie Kenzie Academy by Alexa Gordon. So sh shout out to her. 
Um, yeah. And we read that you were an in-store grocery shopper. So what's yeah. your interest to make, to go from this, from a uh, shopper to a database engineer? That's that's a story. Um, <laughs> so I had just graduated college with a degree I didn't want. Um, I got a degree in chemistry. You know, my parents are Caribbean and my parents are Haitian specifically. And in Haitian culture, if you're not a doctor, lawyer, or what was it, or, or a nurse, then you're nothing. They don't even recognize any career choices. I didn't want to be any of those. Um, and so after I graduated with that degree, I was just like, well, that's done. Um, what next? I spent a year trying to find myself, which was really me just a year of like, I worked at freaking like, what was it, Kroger? as one of those in-store shoppers for people, then I'd bring the stuff out to your car, you know. The, mm -hmm. the shopping was actually kind of fun. I just listened to audiobooks the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, it was getting really boring and I'm just not someone who thrives in that kind of environment. Like people are just like, yeah, I've been here for 20 years. I'm just like, no, I can't do this. <laughs> That's, that can't be my future. Yeah. Um, so my husband, boyfriend at the time, he was just like, why don't you try coding? I'm like, <laughs> No what how do you just try coding? Like that just seems ridiculous. Because everything I knew about coding, honestly, I just seen from TV and movies yeah. and stuff. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm gonna be a hacker, I'm gonna have like the dark shades, I'm gonna be like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna crack into the mainframe and take down the government. Like I that's yeah. what I thought. Um, obviously that wasn't true. Um, so I was like, screw it, I have nothing better to do. So I joined uh Kenzie Academy, my coding boot camp. And you know, went the software engineering route. And honestly, the database engineering was completely by accident. Um, after I graduated, honestly, I was just tired of doing the whole like applying, interviewing, maybe I'll get an offer, blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, I really wasn't applying for long. I think I was applying for like a month and then I was like done with that. And so <laughs> my husband and I were just like, dude, the next company that offers you a job, just fucking take it. And I was like, well. <laughs> Less, you know, just just freaking take it. Let's do something completely irresponsible and take a job that we honestly don't really know much about. You know, I really liked the company when I inter when I interviewed with them, and I thought I was interviewing for a traditional software engineering role. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. You know, <laughs> so I signed on. You know, whatever. Go through the training, and at some point in the training, they were talking about stuff that I had never heard about. They were talking about you know, SQL, like I had done a bit of SQL in coding bootcamp, but they were talking about SQL, Oracle, database. And I was like, um, I don't oh, think this is a software engineering role anymore. Right. That's what I thought it would be, but I mean, we've signed on, we took their money, we spent the sign on bonus. Okay, we're in here. Okay, <laughs> So I just, I rolled with it. And that's the story of how I became a database engineer. I didn't choose it, it chose me. And I mean, here we are. It's, I mean, it's been an interesting job for sure. Like it more so just interesting in that, I mean, I was in boot camp all over again, you know, yeah. for the first, like two months I was in boot camp. We were learning about all this stuff, which was cool at first. And then once it becomes a job, it's way less cool, you know, <laughs> but that's the story of how Darlies became a database engineer. That I, I <laughs> yeah, I, I had no so words. Like, shout out to your husband for telling you to try coding. Right, he, he try like, that. <laughs> like, like he, he put he put you in game. <laughs> I mean, he did. Honestly, I feel like he was playing the long game. He was just like, "I'm gonna choose this girl because she got potential. She got potential." <laughs> he yeah. was Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, he was definitely Mr. Miyagi because uh, I feel like my partner was. <laughs> Uh, similar, uh, but yeah, wow, that is amazing. Then yeah, I, I have nothing to say. It's just amazing. <laughs> it's right, not so. a traditional story of how people get their jobs, but yeah. I mean, it's a story. Yeah, <laughs> right. All right. So the next question: um, Now that you have went through this and be became a database guru, right? How would you <laughs> how would you approach like refactoring a you know a database uh, to scalable? That's such a loaded question and honestly such a long one. So I'll just give like a really high level explanation, okay. especially because like I don't, I specifically don't work in the refactoring of databases, but I'll just go based off what I know. So there are a couple steps. 
step one is to determine if you even need to refactor your database. Um, because what you'll come to realize is that sometimes it's more trouble than it's worth at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, because databases are usually attached to different applications. And if you realize after you go through it, after you realize that, yo, we would have to change so many other things to make this refactor work, it becomes a little less likely that you're going to refactor it at that time. It's just not, it's, it's just not a good plan. It would just take too much time, too much effort, too much back and forth. We don't have time. People are wanting, you know, this specific error fix. Let's just fix this error and we will refactor later. You know, and then second step would be to choose a method of refactoring. So there are a couple of different things you could do. Usually it deals with maybe like changing some data structures. Some data structures obviously take up more space than others. Certain logic will take up uh, more space or, you know, be faster than others. So usually you'll just go in and be like, maybe this could be a little bit better, you know, or not. Yeah. You know? And that's usually sort of the easy part. The harder parts come in when you're like writing your unit testing. Unit testing is kind of annoying, but oh, important. Okay. yeah, <laughs> you, you already know, okay? We gotta put tests at every stage because you just never know with code. Code will just wake up and decide to fuck you up. <laughs> so you have to put in a test yeah. to determine if it's likely to fuck you up that day. <laughs> so that's unit testing. And then after that, you go into the hardest part, which is deprecating and modifying. Mm -hmm. which is sort of like the transition phase where you're just like, okay, I'll take this part of the database and this part of the code and I'll work with it a little bit. And then you're usually working with application developers and be like, okay, I changed this part of the database, reflect that in, you know, on your side of the application and the code. And then you kind of just go back and forth between them. That's honestly like the longest process, depending on like how robust your database is, but the most important part, because especially since you're working, you're usually working in a sandbox. You don't ever obviously want to work on your production code because mm -hmm. if you fuck up and you will, you <laughs> will fuck up. If you fuck up, you do not want to do that in production. Pushing to production, pushing an error to production makes you just want to be like, I quit. Clearly they're going to fire me. Like I have felt that I have accidentally pushed to production and I wanted to quit immediately. I'm like, well, this is it. They're going to fire me. I'm going to be that tech girl, that one black tech girl. They're going to be like, fire her. <laughs> You know, you know, but yeah. many people have done it, so it's fine. After that, you know, you go into like migrating your data. Like once you know you've gone through the whole unit testing and modifying, you migrate your data, um, update any external programs that deal with the you know database. You want it to reflect your database after it's been cleaned up and stuff. Um, and then you implement your integration sandbox. Now you're in a completely different sandbox. It's like, you can't just integrate now. We have to test to see if it works in production. Yeah. Now put it in production, test to see. Now, if that works, which it doesn't honestly on the first try, but <laughs> if it does happen to work on the first try, you're a god. Um, and then you can push to production. But if it doesn't, and it won't, you go back to step one and be like, how do we react? Like, it's just not, it's not, I told you guys, it's not a sexy job. It's not gonna be like, man, I feel really good. It's about like, okay, I'm coming into work. How will this code fuck me today? That's, that's, the, that's the job. That's pretty much it. So I hope that uh, explained uh, how to refactor a database to be scalable. I love that. <laughs> Do you have any follow up for that? <laughs> no. No? Oh, OK. <laughs> I know that was like quite the visual, but uh, <laughs> welcome to databases. Yes. Well, it's it's so. I mean, I find that there's a lot of similarities, like uh, refactoring code versus refactoring yeah. databases, right? Very so, similar. It's funny enough, I mean, I love the fact that everything so far that we've touched upon today, Travis and I have talked about today. <laughs> um, you know, and like I told him that same thing. I'm like, there's you know, there's a lot of edge cases where um, you have to make sure, like, the end users are. Idiots. We gotta treat treat them like idiots, you know, yep. plainly. Uh, but I am. It's just fascinating to me, you know. It, it's the same approach that you take for databases. <laughs> yeah. So that is, uh, yeah, that is impressive. That is impressive. I thought it was not as involved. Oh, but I wish it wasn't as involved. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. So my next question would be, you know, as you you know work with everything with database databases. 
what programming language works better, do you think, with databases? Because I've worked with well, MySQL and PHP and WordPress and Google Firebase and AWS with like React projects, like, a, you, like an example like that. I I mean, I guess it really depends on the project and the scope of your project, to be honest. Like if you're working like enterprise level, like these huge businesses, you know, then uh, PL SQL and Oracle tend to be like the go-to for that. Um, I honestly really like Firebase. So I'm not going to lie to you. Like I've used it for freelancing projects that I've done. I just love how user-friendly it is. And it's just, I mean, really easy. I did hear about another one um, called Supabase. You know, I mean, they, they're not paying me to say this, but it honestly seems <laughs> a little bit better than Firebase. I'm like, I still want to play with it a bit more. It's still fairly new. Um, and they offer a lot of the same things that Firebase does, but I do think they offer a bit more functionality. Um, in terms of like programming, uh, like other programming languages, I mean, I don't really work with I mean, Python is one, Python and Scala. I mean, I don't, I don't, I haven't ever worked with Scala and I just really mm -hmm. love Python because it was like my, the first language I learned that I didn't absolutely hate. JavaScript <laughs> was the first language I learned, absolutely hated it. It was freaking mm -hmm. terrible. I don't even want to look at it sometimes. <laughs> no, please. But Python, I just loved how user friendly it was. Like, I mean, when you read it, it makes sense. Like it's a freaking sentence. Like, yeah, for this, then do the, yeah, sure. It completely <laughs> makes sense. You know, um, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, I usually Python and then for like my SQL, I usually use PL SQL because I mean, that's what I have to do for work. And honestly, it's pretty convenient because SQL by itself um, can't enter. I can't remember what the actual definition is, but PL SQL isn't technically like a programming language like P well, SQL isn't a programming language. PL SQL is the programming language version of SQL. So it can interact with the actual code base um, in a way that SQL can't, if that makes sense. I didn't know that. I, you know what? I'm yeah, I didn't, learn, I didn't know that until I got to work. And I was like, wow. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, wow. Yeah, I, I never knew that that even existed. So that's interesting. I'm, I'm definitely going to be checking that out. Oh, definitely. It's actually, I mean, it's not the most boring part of databases. So yeah, check it out. <laughs> okay. And, and, and speaking of like databases, what would you, um, what would your advice be for somebody about to start to get into database engineering and, you know, starting to learn that? What would you, what would you, advice would you give? Um, build stuff, build shit, to be honest. That's my advice. Um, the best way to learn is to build shit. And that's regardless of whatever you decide to do in tech, to be honest, just build some shit and don't be scared because I'm not going to lie. Some of the documentation when you go and learn online or whatever, is not very user friendly. Like it just comes off. Like, I feel like I should be more, um, experienced to even read their documentation, which doesn't feel good if you're a beginner. Um, but mm -hmm. don't be scared of how hard it is. Like, it's honestly more user friendly than it looks like um, just working with databases. And if you're someone who just, if you're someone who likes to like clock it and then be done like four hours later and you did a good amount of work, like, I mean, database engineering is for you. Like, it's not sexy work. It's not going to be like, look what I do. Like, it's not a front end <laughs> application or anything like that, you know, yeah. but you are the backbone to a lot of these applications. These applications would not function without um, a properly working database. So you kind of feel like the superhero who doesn't get the limelight. You know, you're a little bit of Robin to everybody else's Batman, but everybody knows Robin is better. Yeah. <laughs> everybody knows. What oh, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm not in my office. I'm in my father's office in Florida. Mm -hmm. So you, you're not able to see my uh, Superman, my Trinity, my Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, uh, little oh figure. So the fact that you, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, okay, I have a lot of strong opinions about DC Comics, okay? I have a lot of strong opinions. All right. We can talk about that later. <laughs> this is a database conversation to comic book DC Comics. Right. <laughs> okay. But um, thank you so much for answering those. Um, yeah. It is, yeah, very, very extremely informative. But um, our next segment is gonna be a little more, uh, I don't wanna call it challenging, but more on your, on your toes. So I'm super excited. So for this next segment, we want to learn more about you. Okay. In a 
Okay. Second, <laughs> we'll ask you a series of questions and you have to choose one. So we call this if and then if. And let's start with the first question. Mandy, let's throw it up. Mm. All right. Web design versus web development. Web development. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. I I don't care so much for, like, front-end work or just strictly, like, yeah, place this box here and make it pretty. Like, I don't care, which is, I guess, why I fell into the database engineering route. Like, I specifically care about, like, back-end and mm -hmm. functionality and stuff. Um, so web design is pretty like, I mean, kudos to those who do it and can do it. I just don't have the patience, you know, like, I don't care about Flexbox. I don't care about that at all. Right? <laughs> like, I just, I want this to function wonderfully. And with web development, at least I can work on, I mean, yeah, I have to work on, if I'm building the site myself, I have to work on the front end, but mm -hmm. I can, you know, throw hands on the back end as well. So yeah, <laughs> web development for sure. Okay, okay. All right, so the next one is, um, <laughs> Java, I, I know, there's a few things if you could leave this up here that I absolutely love. It's Java versus P Python, uh, but it's not Python. <laughs> uh, so Java versus Python, Python. Oh, Python all the way, like screw Java. Like I had to learn it a bit for work. It was terrible. Nothing made sense. Like nothing about Java makes any kind of sense to anyone who just looks at it, which I don't like. I like that Java, I mean, you can work with a, a variety of different technologies with Java, but Python, I mean, I'm, I'm probably biased because like it was one of the first languages I learned and loved, but yeah, Python 100%. I agree. I concur. I concur. <laughs> yes. All right. Ooh. Or white wine or red wine? Ah, red wine. Red wine me all day, every day. <laughs> I actually don't care for white wine. White wine tastes like juice. I'm not here for that. That's not why I'm drinking wine. I'm here to get buzzed. I'm here to get lit. And red wine will take me straight there without making me feel like I'm drinking out of a Capri Sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're not wrong. I think we had, I remember, well, I think we had like a glass of Riesling. I'm like, holy crap, it's just water and sugar. <laughs> what is it? It's, it's not great, man. It's not. Yeah. Red wine all day, every day. Mm -hmm. I compare. <laughs> um, so work from home. It's a little bit different with COVID. So imagine this in a pre-post-COVID kind of world. Work from home or work from a destination. <laughs> I have opinions about this, but I want to hear you. <laughs> oh, that's hard, because I love our house. <laughs> to be honest, I love our house. It's so comfy. All my stuff is here, um, which is probably like, uh, but working from a destination, depending on the destination, if it's gorgeous, the Airbnb is nice. No, I have to say work from home, only because I will not get any work done elsewhere. I don't think I could work on... Yeah, I don't think I could get any work done. Like if I was in like Hawaii, like forget work. I ain't doing that shit. Like I was at a beach. You guys are catch me later. Catch me uh, when I come back. But no work is getting done on any kind of beautiful destination. Work from yeah. home. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I am a living example of of working from uh, a destination. It's not a pretty destination. It's freaking Orlando slash Kissimmee, which is <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we're not talking like a paradise, but I completely agree with that. Yeah, I just can't live without all my stuff. Like, what if I need things? Like, I, I mean, you can't see my office, but I have a lot of shit. Like, I mean, I got my two monitors, my lights, mic, iPad. We have like TVs everywhere in this house. Um, this is not an advertisement to rob me, by the way. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but it's just comfy. <laughs> no, honestly, I tell my friends that all the time. Like, I know you're going to come over to my house and be like, whoa, just don't rob me. Don't tell people <laughs> what's in this house, please. <laughs> people would be set if they robbed this house. They strap. <laughs> all right. My sequel versus Postgres. <sighs> That's hard. I've worked with both. Mm, depends. 
I mean, I really like Postgres, um, especially if I'm working with websites. I don't know. It's just because I'm I'm used to it. I really think is what it is. Um, my SQL, I mean, it's also fine. I can't choose between the two, to be honest. It just what am I? Feeling? Which one? What? Which one is like more boring to you? Like <laughs> more boring? My SQL, I think. Yeah, my SQL is definitely more boring. All right, so we'll go with Postgres. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> There we you, go. you helped me figure that out. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I haven't been able to really dig into Postgres. It's more NoSQL and MySQL. Uh, so I, I definitely have to check it out. And I feel like Postgres is such a big database for apps. Am I wrong or am I right? Yeah, it is yeah. a huge database for apps. I definitely suggest checking it out. I think you'll really like it. It's very user friendly. It makes, I think it makes sense. I think it makes the most sense to developers, to be honest. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Now, last question is my favorite. Okay. But oh! I'm you know, a cannabis enthusiast and comes to yes. work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Super>. <laughs> um, Damn, that depends on the mood. Honestly, I'm kind of like a hybrid kind of girl sometimes. A lot of the times I do like a hybrid, but if not, I really like the feel of a nice indica, <laughs> to be honest. I love that that feeling. Sativa's kind of make me sleepy active. I don't even know if that makes sense. Okay, yeah. So yeah. It, it, it gives me a nice like head high, you know, yeah. and I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna be creative or whatever, and then nothing ever gets done. <laughs> but with Indica, you know, I'm either gonna be asleep or sleep. <laughs> I would say like two of my favorite modes to be. I, sleep is like my favorite hobby, I think, outside of TV. I think I sleep competitively. <laughs> I definitely do. I sleep competitively, man. You tell me you got to sleep for 12 hours. Bet. Say less. Say less. Run me my money. I really can't sleep competitively. Try me. That is amazing. That is amazing. That was so. So let's uh, jump into the next segment here. Uh, so in this next segment, we are, well, when I say we, Mandy, the producer, really dug deep into some oh. of your from your social channels. And we asked a simple question, what's the backstory or explain the source code? Okay. So let's see that first image, Mandy. Let's see what we have. Oh. Yeah, so for the people listening, we have Darlie's here hanging out in Times Square with her friend, uh, looking fly as fuck. Like the balls, everything. Like those are those are some serves right now. Like <laughs> I absolutely love it. So uh, yes, Darlie's, let's explain the uh, source code with this. I love that picture so freaking much. I love that picture. You couldn't have picked a better picture. <laughs> Oh man, so I went to New York for my friend's birthday and we were uh, walking down the street after we got some churros, I think, and some photographer literally stopped us and she was like, I love your look, can I take your picture? And knowing me, like, I'm a person who loves gas, like, you know, gas me the fuck <laughs> up, like, I feed off of it, yes, give me all that energy. And I was like, bitch, yes, you can take my picture any day. What do I gotta do? Let me pose, what do I gotta do? Say less, say less. Show me all the pictures, show me all the poses. So that's how that picture happened. Um, so that was pretty cool because I'd never had that experience before someone just wanting to take my picture. So, yeah. That is amazing. That's cool. Yeah. And it, I, looks, I, it looks planned out. It wasn't planned out at all. It wasn't planned at all. She just said pose. And I was like, say less. Say less. <laughs> say less. Like I was serving her all the looks. Okay. I I modeled like my life depended on it. Like I was on America's Next Top Model and Tyra Banks was going to say, you're going home. Like that's how I was, that's my mindset. <laughs> I love that. Wait, so there's more than just- Yeah, there's more. She sent me a couple. I didn't post, I mean, I just posted what I thought would be the most fire on Instagram. I'm like, this is it. I'm serving looks, the glasses are fire. I don't, like, I'm holding coffee. Like, you know, I'm like on Gossip Girl or something. Like it was pure <laughs> bad bitch vibes. That's so bad. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's see the second one here. Now, uh, this was the producer's favorite one. Now, this is a dish. Uh, 
I, I really can't tell. I think there's Cinnabons in the, in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like a lot of sugar buns in the middle. And then around it is your platter of cheese. We have strawberries. We have grapes, blueberries, sausages, apples. Like this is like a smorgasbord of <laughs> different types of food. Like there's no, um, it's, I can't tell if it's breakfast, brunch, lunch, or dinner. <laughs> so we beg the question. Please explain that source story. Oh my gosh. So I went on a trip for my friend's bachelorette party. We went up to a cabin in the mountains and I was like, guys, I'm going to do a brunch charcuterie board. Okay. Like it's going to be fire. And I had never done one before. So I literally just like, was like, all right, what fruit do we have? What meat do we have? What stuff do we have? Put it on a plate. All right. I'm going to organize it. Okay. It's going to be a look. It's going to be a vibe. All right. I'm going to put it on the plate. We're going to organize. It's going to be amazing. All right. When I take a picture, Instagram is going to fucking love it. And it was, I mean, it looks good. It tasted pretty good. I'm proud of it. You know, like I, t I try to pretend I'm like one of those YouTube home chefs a lot. And, you know, sometimes it pays off. <laughs> No, that looked amazing. I mean, like, Travis, what's the one thing you would eat for? What, was the what would be the first thing you go after in that? Like, that like, I was trying to see in the middle, were those like cinnamon buns? They were, they were cinnamon rolls, man, made from scratch. What? Wow. Oh. 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 Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you just put the game down with that one. I got mm -hmm. it. look like you bought it from somewhere. You made those at the house? Yup. Yeah. That's okay. what I do, Pete. That's what I do. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I definitely would go for the cinnamon roll first. That, yeah, it looked on point. And like the whole thing actually looked like you bought that. Like the fact that you made that is great. You're making me cry. You know, I I, I feel I, I live off the gas, you know. <laughs> my life bar just wow, man. Well, uh, my two cents is that um I really thought you had gone out. Like that was like somewhere like, oh. a, somewhere. <laughs> Uh, they got out. Like even the plate and the design of the table. <laughs> right. I bought the plate myself, Tarjay. You know what I'm saying? Like, it had to be a look. It had to be a look. <laughs> Mandy, do you think you could throw it up again? Because I, I, I need to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. It does look good. I'm proud of it so much. I just noticed the sunny side up egg in the bottom left. Mm. So there's eggs in there. Oh. It's brunch, and we made mimosas. Like it was a whole vibe. Oh, I see it. It's wow. a whole vibe. Is, is, is those apple and strawberry? Mm-hmm. Apple, strawberries, grapes. What else? I don't even remember. I just put a whole bunch of shit on there, but like, make it work. Make it and work. I'm, I'm assuming those are cheese blocks, not pineapples. Right yeah, now, right? cheese blocks. Yeah, they were oh, yeah. a cheddar. Wow. Wow. Oh uh, yeah. That made me hungry. Right, I'm like, mm, that's not weird. <laughs> wow. Let's now jump into the last one here. What do we have? Okay, so I love the shirt, by the way, which I think <laughs> none better, <laughs> right? And I feel like this is how you looked when you first got into your job and they kept talking about all these different things that you were just mentioning earlier. Uh, the stress face is like upon you and uh you're looking at i assume i'm gonna assume it's a database <laughs> and you're like what the fuck is happening here so what is happening here explain that backstory <laughs> i will explain that backstory so for my for my tech instagram sometimes i take like sh you know shoots at home you know because i like to do like some self photography on the side and my dogs were fucking around, you know, making all kinds of noise and tearing stuff up. And then I had realized they had torn up. I, forget, I think they had they had eaten one of my makeup blenders, like a, a blender brush. They had eaten it, torn it apart. And I didn't notice uh, until after, like, I put the timer on on the camera and I looked and I was like, ah, and then, <laughs> and then I kept it. So... <laughs> I mean, I thought it was pretty cute. I was like, well, this is nice. I mean, a nice stressed face. I mean, we, ju we just run with it, you know? People thought it was planned. It was not planned at all. I did not plan that picture. Uh, yeah. I thought it was planned like that. No. <laughs> all your best pictures and best things are just like not planned. like Not planned, which is so crazy because I'm usually such a planner and organized person. I'm thinking I should just plan less and life will just happen and give me funny, funny stories to tell. I'm, I'm not going to lie, darling. It's, it's, um, 
we, uh, my partner and I, we uh, live life very winging it. <laughs> so like, anybody can tell you, like, we don't plan. We just kind of wing it. Thus, us in Florida. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, oh, so uh, you're absolutely right. Because the first picture was just a random photographer that appeared like a freaking Pokemon <laughs> and was like, here. <laughs> I'm gonna, I can see my codex. Or right. Like, oh, yes, oh, yes. I need um, to be like you guys. Let me just never plan ever again, and then maybe life will just be better. <laughs> it's a little surprise. Life is a surprise. <laughs> no, I gotta keep it balanced. My husband isn't a, isn't much of a planner, and so somebody has to plan, or else we're gonna be like SOL, like shit out of love for real. To be honest. Oh yeah. So um, we do have a few extra minutes here that uh, I was hoping to get because I want to circle back on this DC stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please explain that real quick, uh, just out of curiosity. Um, is DC? Are you a DC or you're a Marvel person? I'm a DC person because people die in DC. And I think that reflects real life. Marvel, I mean, visually, Marvel is, visually Marvel is amazing. Like I will give them that. But DC, I mean, it's so real and gritty. Like I watched the, uh, the, the new Justice League, you know, the Snyder Cut. It was fantastic. It's what it should have been in the first place. Like, I don't know what they did with the first one, but the, this cut, everything, everything I could have ever needed from that film. But definitely a DC person. I love the characters. I think they're real, like Marvel characters. Like, like I cannot stand Captain America. I like refuse <laughs> to watch anything with him. Like, I love him as an actor, but the character is just like, oh, please, I can't listen to you right now. I don't want to listen to your rhetoric. <laughs> like, everything can't be like, just do the right thing. Like, shut up, God. <laughs> it's not that easy. But yeah. <laughs> Definitely love DC. Wonder Woman's my favorite. Love Wonder Woman. Like, I mean, not the live action. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't a fan of it, to be honest. But the animated versions, love, 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 love. I'm so happy to hear that. You don't understand. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> like, I always tell people one of my favorite movies is Batman v Superman, right? Like, oh, the, yes. That movie is it's <laughs> it is it is amazing. Oh, and people always tell me like, oh, oh, Martha, mom, <laughs> what are you doing? And I'm like, come on, guys, it's, it's so much deeper than that. <laughs> it is, it is. Oh, DC is just such, I think Marvel has, no, DC I think has better storytelling. If DC had Marvel's budget, like their Avengers budget, I think, oh my God, they would just pass them immediately, immediately. Yeah. yeah. I also think Batman and Joker should just kiss and get it over with. <laughs> yeah, you're straight up celebrating back here, like, yep, I saw That's that. That's it. That I think it's just it. when Ben Affleck was like, oh yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I think there's a lot of tension between them, and they do this back and forth thing. Like Batman could have ended this movie, <laughs> movies and series ago, but he refuses, and so that's why I think they should just kiss. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I know you are sometimes in the middle of the DC kind of Marvel kind of thing. You kind yeah. of you know both. So but, I, I hear your thoughts. I I would say this: like the more I watch it, I I kind of can see how Marvel is like the the commercial version, if mm -hmm. you will, of any type of comic story. So if you don't yeah. want to get too deep into it, or if you like on like a first date and you don't like the girl, go see a Marvel movie. <laughs> well, if you like it, then you go see the DC. Because you're gonna get really into it, and you, you know what I'm saying. So that's, that's how I look at it. It's like Marvel's like the cheap version, but they have money to make it look pretty. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and years ago I'd have been like Marvel, Marvel. But now I'm like, it's not, it's not like a story. It's not no depth to it. You know what I mean? There's no depth. You already know. You hit it on the mark. There's yeah. no depth in Marvel. It's just pretty. That's all right. Yeah. It's just front end. That cheap day. <laughs> <laughs> It's just front end. <laughs> just front end. <laughs> that was a quarter joke. <laughs> and now to try to tie this all together, um, if you were to compare a database to Marvel and compare a database to DC, which would they be? Oh, 
Let me think on that one. I think Marvel is a very sim. I think Marvel is fire based. Anyone can get into it. You know, it's uh, it's pretty easy. The documentation is simple. And I think DC is like my sequel, PL sequel, Oracle. Like, I mean, you really got to be like, you, I mean, I'm not saying you got to be a professional to do it, but I think you you have to be a different kind of person to appreciate. You got to be like the upper echelon of people to really appreciate it for what it is. But, yeah. you know, Firebase is just, Firebase Marvel is just easier on the grander public, I think. <laughs> Nice, nice. Uh, well, with that, um, I'm sad to say, I think we're coming, we wrapping this up. Um, so with that being said, Travis, do you have anything you want to throw out there? Uh, let everyone know watching on, on the podcast. I just want to definitely thank our developer for coming on. We appreciate Woo. you. You know, and shout out to everybody who has someone that pushes them into try coding. Because we see it <laughs> very well for her. Um, <laughs> And, um, you know, everybody can make this transition into the world of coding. That's what we're about here at Coders Intensive. What about you, Corp? Uh, no, I just want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank everyone that was listening on the podcast. I want to thank our sponsor, Get Cannabis. Um, I want to thank essentially everyone for always being with us every Thursday and uh, talking shit with us. Because in the end, we need this to express ourselves. We need to... Uh, detached from the computer. Mm, that's kind of a weird thing since we are on the computer right now. <laughs> detach and disconnect and just talk within friends and just shit talk everything that happens around us. Um, and uh, Darlize, is there anything you want to throw out there? Uh, anything you want to plug in? Now is your time. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, obviously follow me on like all the social medias, um, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter. It's at Darvelopper. Like it's straight up jokes there. If you're looking for a serious engineer, you won't find her there. Um, and follow like uh, Haitians in Tech and Baddies in Tech. Um, I work really heavily with both of those organizations and both of them are geared towards helping people of color get into the tech industry, offer resources, networking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're looking for something like that or a community like that, or looking to support or looking for talent, diverse talent for a company, hit those people up or hit me up and I will hit those people up. And that's pretty much it. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you for everyone watching. It was a great one. Um, we might have to convince our developer here to uh, come back for a part two and discuss more of all this. <laughs> <laughs> so my and thank you, coders and people, for watching. All right. All right see you.